There's also this massive political war between the government and the opposition. The opposition is gunning for the Narendra Modi government. The BJP has hit right back with an Andolan GV jibe saying this is a Congress and left propaganda assault on the government. I'm Gaurav Savant. We get you all details. But as always, let's get started with the headlines at five. Sensational details in the parliament security breach. Six accused hatched the plan through 2022. The intruders, Sagar and Manoranjan, also did a recce of the parliament building. 15 opposition MPs suspended for disrupting house proceedings. Opposition India Alliance allies corner the Narendra Modi government on parliament security breach. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh assures the House and thorough investigation will be carried out. Key Parliament breach conspirator Lalit Jha still on the run. Last location traced to Neemrana in Rajasthan. India Today tracks down a friend who Lalit Jha shared the breach video with. Parliament security breach prompts security overhaul. Visitors gallery now to be encased full body scanners at entry gates of parliament. Big win for the Hindu side in the Mathura case after Gyanwapi. The Allahabad High Court permits survey of the Eidgah Mosque at the Sri Krishna Janmabhoomi Temple premises. And India Today now gets you details, the inside scoop of that meeting that was held. The Prime Minister held a meeting with his ministerial colleagues. The Prime Minister spoke to the ministers on the parliament security breach and he told the ministers that there should be no politics on a national security issue. The breach of parliament. This was an attack on the temple of democracy. This was where... Members of parliament cutting across party lines, they were all in the house when two intruders jumped from the visitors gallery into the parliament, into the Lok Sabha and disrupted proceedings. I quickly want to cut across to India Today's Palami Saha who scooped out details of the Prime Minister's conversation with his ministerial colleagues. Palami, what did the Prime Minister say? What details do we have? Well, the Prime Minister told his uh, colleagues in the Union Council, the Cabinet Ministers who met with him earlier this morning, it's a usual protocol meeting that he has during every session, every day. And today, of course, uh, the topic of conversation, part naturally, was about the security breach yesterday inside the premises of Parliament. Parliament, uh, of course, was functioning yesterday while the Prime Minister was not in Parliament because he was in Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. So today, of course, he had a conversation concerning it and told uh, the senior ministers that this incident needs to be taken very seriously. Please convey to the Speaker that all measures should be taken in order to ensure that everyone is secure and safe inside this uh, premises. All precautions uh, need to be taken and in fact do not indulge in any sort of uh, politics or, or political bickering over this because this is not the subject or the issue over which any politicking should take place. So take this very seriously and convey the same as well to everyone concerned and that is my concern. Paul, we keep trying that story. I will come to you for more. There should be no politics on this breach in security. After all, the parliament is our temple of democracy and this has been targeted by the four who, who've they been taken into custody. Of course, there are some who are still at large. The probe into this parliament breach has intensified. Four of the six accused in this major security breach have now been charged under stringent sections of the anti-terror law, UAPA. Eight people have been suspended for the security breach. India today now has details about how the accused plotted to storm the parliament. And this plan was in the works for over a year. We bring you the inside details of investigations. Six people meticulous planning 
and twin security breach. The shocking scenes in Lok Sabha on Wednesday stunned the entire countrymen. But the act was an impromptu. Police sources say the plan to breach parliament was allegedly hatched in 2022 when all the accused met via social media page Bhagat Singh Fan Club. Long before he jumped from the visitor's gallery into the Lok Sabha chamber with a colored smoke canister in hand, Manoranjan from Mysuru allegedly found a gap in parliament's security when he recied the premises in March. He realized that shoes weren't checked properly and placed the canisters inside the shoes to get them into parliament. Manoranjan's father, however, says his son has never had any anti-national sentiments. It was not just Manoranjan who recied parliament. Sagar, the second accused who jumped into the Lok Sabha chamber, allegedly visited Delhi from Lucknow in July to check how things function inside and outside parliament. He is the same person who got visitor passes issued by BJP MP Pratap Simha's office. The accused allegedly reached Delhi between December 6 and 10, one by one. All of them stayed at the Gurugram house of Vicky Sharma, who allegedly helped them with the logistics before they stormed into parliament. Vicky Sharma. पिछले 15-20 साल से इस मकान में रह रहा था इससे पहले 70 80 और 90 के दशक में जो फौजी गैंग था उसका यह सक्रिय सदस्य था गुरुग्राम क्राइम ब्रांच के अधिकारी यहां पर पहुंचे थे इस मकान से काफी चौंकाने वाली चीजें जरूर सामने आई थी अंदर कुछ बैग्स के अंदर भगत सिंह सुखदेव और राजगुरु के से संबंधित तमाम किताबें मौजूद थी उनकी फोटो जो है वो दीवारों पर लगी हुई थी यानी कहीं ना कहीं काफी अहम सुराग गुरुग्राम पुलिस को भी लगे हैं Amol Shinde, the protester arrested from outside parliament, allegedly brought the smoke canisters from Maharashtra. It was distributed among the accused on December 13th near India Gate. Lalit Jha, the alleged key conspirator of the parliament's security breach, is currently on the run. Jha allegedly videographed the security breach outside parliament and sent it to a friend in Bengal. I just saw one, two seconds, I saw that some people are protesting in a street. I didn't saw the details because, I, as I said, I was still outside. So the, after seeing that, I asked that where it is from, means where this has happened. After I came home, I saw the news channels and then I got to know that this has happened in the parliament, in Lok Sabha. Okay, he didn't reply immediately after your questions? Uh, he hasn't replied uh, still, means he hasn't, um, no kind of uh, connections has been restored from that side. The four accused, Amol, Neelam, Manoranjan and Sagar, have been booked under anti-terror law UAPA. But the question is, who is the real mastermind? Who were they working for? With Neeraj Vashisht in Gurugram, Anaga in Bengaluru and Rithik Mondal in Kolkata, Bureau Report, India Today. And the opposition is up in arms. The opposition MPs are protesting against their suspension. Opposition MPs say that they are being suspended. And apparently so far 15 MPs have been suspended. But no action has been taken against BJP MP Pratap Simha. Pratap Simha, the, the man who attacked or entered the parliament uh, and jumped into the well of the house, he had a visitor's pass issued on the directions of Pratap Simha's office. 15 opposition MPs have been suspended so far. KC Venugopal, Congress Party leader and general secretary has taken to social media platform uh, X to say a horrible, undemocratic move to suspend opposition MPs for demanding an answer from the government on the shocking security breach in parliament yesterday. On the one hand, MPs are being suspended for demanding accountability. While on the other, there is no action against BJP MP who facilitated the entry of 
miscreants. This is the murder of democracy. The BJP government has reduced parliament to a rubber stamp. Not even the pretense of a democratic process is left. Unquote. Let me get you reactions that are coming in from parliament. I'll get you more on this big story. This is a clear hypocritic stand of this government is witnessing nowadays. On one side, very, very, very big breach of security had been happened in the parliament. The person who was responsible for the entire this breach of responsibility is sitting in the house. Prabhup Sina MP, those who recommended for these people to enter into the house. On the other side, the MPs who's demanding for a reply from the government on the serious breach of security had been suspended. This is becoming a banana republic now. These people are making India as a banana republic. This Tana Shahi Sarkar ke liye Modi manzoor nahi hai. Hamne bar bar koshish ki ki Neta Pratipaksh Rajya Sabha mein unko mauka diya jaye ki ye mudda uthane ke liye. Kyunki ye bhoot gambhir maamla hai. Kal joh hua, ye kaise hua? क्यों हुआ और ये जो सुरक्षा के प्रावधानों का उल्लंघन कल सारा देश देखा इसके बारे में प्रधानमंत्री चुप हैं गृहमंत्री चुप हैं वो आए दोनों सदनों में एक बयान दें उसके बाद सदन की कार्रवाई चलती रहे सो मेंबर्स ऑफ द ऑपोजिशन इन द अलायंस दे आर ऑल कमिंग टुगेदर एंड अक्यूजिंग द नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट of dictatorship. You heard Jairam Ramesh there say that Tana Shahi Sarkar, KC Venugopal earlier said India is becoming a banana republic, not even a pretense of democracy. The opposition wants a statement, not just from the Union Home Minister Amit Shah, but also want a statement from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Of course, the issue still remains, how could elements breach security? How could they enter parliament and then from the visitor's gallery jump into the house and create ruckus? Is there a wider conspiracy behind this? Just these six elements or are there many, many more? Massive political face-off over the security breach in the parliament. The opposition has demanding, uh, is demanding answers. They want Union Home Minister Amit Shah to come forward and explain this breach in security. Of course, DMK MP Derek O'Brien, he was suspended from the Rajya Sabha. Eight members of parliament were suspended from Lok Sabha for not permitting the house to function. In all, so far, 15 MPs have been suspended. <laughs> The biggest parliament security breach since the terror attack in 2001 has now sparked a showdown in the house, with the opposition trying to corner the Narendra Modi government. The opposition disrupted proceedings in the Lok Sabha, demanding answers from Home Minister Amit Shah. Similar scenes played out in the Rajya Sabha as well. My name to leave the house immediately. What are you doing? In the upper house, TMC parliamentary party leader Derek O'Brien was suspended from the remainder of the winter session. Having taken a serious note of the ignoble misconduct of Sri Derek O'Brien, he has been continuously shouting slogans, gesticulating aggressively at the chair thereby disrupting proceedings of the House in utter disregard to the authority of the chair and having been named by the chair, resolves that the above-mentioned member, Sri Derek O'Brien, be suspended from the service of the Council. Similarly, in the Lok Sabha, 14 opposition members of Parliament, including Kanimore of the DMK and Manikam Tagore of the Congress Party were suspended. This House, having taken the serious note of the misconduct of Sri T.N. Pratapan, Sri Hibi Hidan, Sushri Jyotimani, Kumari Ramya Haridas, and Sri Dean Kuryakos, in utter disregard to the House and the authority of the Chair, and having been named by the Chair, resolved that above mentioned mentor members to be suspended from the service of the house for the remainder session 
under rule 374 the modi government while not giving in to the demands by the opposition for a debate and statement by the home minister listed past instances of security breach in the past also many such incidents have been taken place i am not comparing the past incidents and defending the today's incident but we have to learn lesson from the our past to bring the bright future sabne usko condemn the government has urged the house to speak in one voice in my opinion this matter concerns us all and we have to speak in one voice sir on such a grave national issues no politics is expected to be done by anyone on such issues the opposition however is showing no signs of backing down sources say india bloc leaders will be seeking an appointment with the president draupadi murmu that to raise the issue of the parliament security breach they are also demanding a joint parliamentary committee consisting of members with prior experience in policing security and law to be set up to investigate the breach ye itne bade ghatna ghati hai na aap tak koi prime minister ki koi bayan aayi na home minister ki koi bayan sab chuppi saade hai मतलब इनसे कोई तालुकात ही नहीं है लगता है हमको कहा गया था ये नया सदन बना है कि फुल प्रूफ सिक्योरिटी अरेंजमेंट है परिंदा भी अंदर नहीं घुस सकता परिंदा भी पैर नहीं मार सकता इस प्रकार से सुरक्षा व्यवस्था है कल हमने क्या देखा दो चार लड़के घुस गए द भारतीय जनता पार्टी ऑन द अदर हैंड इज पॉइंटिंग फिंगर्स एट द ऑपोजिशन The party's IT cell chief posted old images and videos of one of the accused Neelam taking part in the protests earlier calling her an andolan jeevi and a supporter allegedly of the Congress party Bureau report India today Now India today has details of the investigations that have been carried out so far and it appears that this was a well planned conspiracy the accused had met close to 2 years ago so they met a year and a half ago manoranjan reached delhi a proper recce was conducted and not once but twice sagar carried out the recce outside parliament so this was a well planned conspiracy they actually went and saw what the parliament building looked like from inside then the accused reached vicky's house in gurugram house number sector uh, 67 sector 17 in gurugram it was vicky who provided logistical support so all the accused stayed at vicky's house the night before they came to the national capital then passes were collected from the personal assistant of member of parliament pratap simha the accused then met at india gate five of the accused crackers were distributed amongst the two groups and then they split up and carried out this attack 13th of december was very carefully chosen for this attack because remember 22 years ago 13th of december 2021 was uh, 20 2001 was when pakistani terrorists had attacked the temple of indian democracy so they chose the date very carefully what's extremely disturbing that a us based Khalistan terror backer Gurpatwan Singh Pannu had issued a threat that on the 13th of December parliament would be targeted so there was a specific intelligence alert that went out from the intelligence bureau and from the delhi police and despite that security was so lax does it indicate that lessons haven't been learned because investigations also reveal that there are about 100 plus vacancies in parliament security there are many other discrepancies or many other irregularities that are now coming to fore and we'll be tracking that story very very closely it's a huge shot in the arm for the hindu side in the shri krishna janmabhoomi issue the ilahabad high court on thursday permitted a plea to appoint a court monitored commissioner a court commissioner to conduct a survey 
at the disputed Eidgah, the Shahi Eidgah adjoining the Sri Krishna Janmabhumi in Mathura. Earlier, on the 16th of November, Justice Mayank Kumar Jain had reserved his order on the application after hearing all sides. Thursday's order is being seen as a step forward in reclaiming the entire disputed land in the Sri Krishna Janmasthali. A court-monitored advocate commissioner is going to conduct a survey of the disputed Shahi Eidgah premises adjoining the Sri Krishna Janbhumi temple in Mathura. Within the next four days, the Allahabad High Court will announce the appointment of the commissioner. After hearing both the parties today, the Honorable Allahabad High Court has ordered for an advocate commissioner survey. And when this advocate commissioner survey will go, it will go and find the actual factual position of the spot and will submit a report before the Honorable Court. हम जो है हिंदुस्तान के निवासी है तो हिंदुस्तान का संविधान मानते हैं तो संविधान का जो है संविधान पर विश्वास रखते हैं जांच के लिए आदेश हो गया है तो जांच जो है होना चाहिए किसी को विरोध नहीं होना चाहिए अ पेटिशन वाज फाइल्ड बाय द डेटी भगवान श्री कृष्ण विराजमान एंड सेवन अदर्स थ्रू एडवोकेट्स इन द अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट इंसिस्टिंग दैट लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णस बर्थ प्लेस लाइज बिनीथ the Shahi Eidgah mosque premises and that there are many signs which establish that the mosque was built on a Hindu temple foundation. The petitioners insist that there is a lotus shaped pillar which is characteristic of Hindu temples and the image of Sheshnag, one of the Hindu deities who protected Lord Krishna on the night of his birth is present at the Shahi Eidgah. In their submissions, the petitioners have also said that at the base of the lotus-shaped pillar of the mosque, Hindu religious symbols and engravings were clearly visible. Our suits were based on specific research and we had specific pleadings to this effect that this entire area where Shahi Eidgah Mosque is located is, is an illegal construction and it is an encroachment on the land of the deity. Earlier, in the last week of November, the Allahabad High Court granted approval for Uttar Pradesh government's construction plans for the Banke Bihari Temple Corridor in Mathura. Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited the Sri Krishna Janbhumi right after the Allahabad High Court order. He is also the first Indian Prime Minister to visit the Sri Krishna Temple. Bureau report India today. How is this step extremely significant? Let's try and make sense of this development. Does this indicate that the petitioners are moving or inching forward to reclaim lost territory, lost legacy? Vishnu Shankar Jain is an advocate in the Supreme Court of India who is leading this prayer. He joins me on the show. Also with me is Shubhrashtra, a respected political analyst, and Bilal Khan, again, a political analyst and lawyer, well-respected guest. To all my guests, many thanks for joining me. But I want to begin by asking Vishnu Shankar Jain, why is this step so significant, sir? The appointment of a court commissioner. What will the court commissioners do? See, after 12th October 1968, when this illegal compromise was entered into between Shri Krishna Janmumi Seva Sangh and the Shahidga Mosque, no one has entered into the premises in question and has ascertained the actual factual position of the spot. Now, if you will visit the uh, Krishna Janmumi Temple, the plinth of the temple and the plinth of the mosque, Gaurav, is the same. Meaning thereby, Shri Krishna, the Shahidga Mosque has not been constructed on a fresh construction. The foundations are foundations of a Hindu temple. And we have a clear history in this case that the title, have you seen any case in this country where the title is with one party and the possession is with someone else? The natural corollary which title has, which, which, a, which a person having title is that you will have possession. But here is the case where the title is with Lord Krishna and the position is with Shahidga Masjid of two acres of land. So we are saying 
our categorical case is that this 13.37 acres of land is the land of the deity. Okay. It belongs to the deity. And the ownership document, the title document of this uh, land is with the uh, is with the Krishna Jan Bhumi Trust. Fair enough. And the possession of two acres is with uh, Shahid Ga Mosque. Fair so enough. Therefore, to ascertain the actual factual position. Let's as take this step by step. Of... Let's take this step by step. And Vishnu, do stay with me. You're you're actually explaining this for the benefit of our viewers. Let me also bring in Bilal Khan into this conversation. Bilal Khan, why is this step? significant yet being opposed by many should this step be opposed if the hindus say this is the sri krishna janbhumi we want it why should there be an objection sir i ask a simple question to mr uh, vishnu jain ji what about the uh, places of worship act please tell me where is it is totally you know seen the uh, Eidga Masjid in Moscow. Ji ji. Hello. Ha ha. Ab vistar se batayiye. Ab vistar se batayiye. Vistar se batayiye. Thik. So we'll we'll reestablish that that uh, link with uh, Bilal Khan in just a moment. But uh, before I bring in Subhrashtra again on the legal point, since Bilal Khan raised the issue of Places of Worship Act, Vishnu Shankar Jain, does this case even? draw the places of worship act or do some facts need to be set right sir see places of worship act is not attracted in isolation if they are saying that places of worship act is attracted i can also say that places of worship act is attracted in my favor because if you see the irony ra uh, gorav very important fact as i told you that the cut off date which is used in places of worship act is 15th august 1947 yes and this compromise happened on 12th of october 1968 the so called mosque which you are seeing has been constructed after 12th of october 1968 in violation of section 3 of the places of worship act is the categorical pleading so just by saying you are assuming one party is assuming that places of worship act is protecting them no sir the places of worship act is protecting me you have violated section 3 you have entered into the land of the deity you have constructed a mosque after the cut off date of 15th august 1947 point number 1 point number 2 the places of worship act uses the word religious character religious character has to be ascertained by way of an evidence in the suit to explain yeah, myself by way of an example what does it mean right now in moscow suppose so, gorav if i okay bilal khan let bilal khan let me come before i bring in shubhrashtra since you were interrupted uh, uh, by that connection bilal khan let's talk about the places of worship act we'll talk about gyanwapi separately this is a question that that we are talking about is the shri krishna janbhumi in mathura is the sunni waqf board and the shahi eidgah trust on a weak wicket here places of worship act goes against you here sir agar aap case padh kar aaye hain sir yes yes places of worship act let me bring in shubhrashtra into this conversation shubhrashtra why should this matter go to court anyways when the title is very clear and when there is also that farman of aurangzeb that talks about destruction of a temple to build a mosque where do you stand on this is there any reason to oppose it because there are some who say communal harmony may be adversely impacted ma'am thank you gorav for having me on the show um i stand on two uh, i stand on two platforms i stand on a platform form which gives me an identification as a hindu and then there is a platform where i identify myself as an indian first if i identify myself as an indian first i think as indians we have fought the ram janmabhoomi case and we have won fair and square so it is going it might be an arduous long battle just as it was in case of ayodhya and i think as hindus we are ready to fight that battle but if you talk to me as a hindu i completely echo your sentiment when the the title makes it clear we all know that uh, lord krishna was born there it's not just us hindus who have been saying so muslim poets like ras khan have written uh, written poems after poems singing a uh, 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 pains to the deity so 
I, I think there is no dispute there. The dispute arises and this whole conversation about the, the uh, atmosphere being vitiated arises because there are a certain section of people in the uh, political arena and that can span across academia and uh, uh, you know media uh, uh, so society the NGO okay. uh, the NGO ecosystem and all of that who would want this kind of conversation to go on they would try to impose a certain an idea of secularism to say that we should give it up because we, it has not been there with us for a very long time but i don't agree with all of with with any of that um this this is a rightful place for hindus we have been identifying ourselves with that particular uh, uh, space uh, personally for me i took my grandfather late grandfather there it, it holds okay. an emotional value for me as it goes for a number of okay uh, and on the legal point also shubhrash i appreciate your point entirely but vishnu shankar jain on the legal point, there are documents and pre-independence documents that well prove this area was a Hindu temple and you've traced it back to Raja, Raja Bir Bundela, how a temple yes. was, was built, a Bhavya Mandir was built and why Aurangzeb ordered its destruction. Certain uh, important dates I want to highlight on your show. In 1618, the history says, and there are ample proofs of construction of a Bhavya temple in 1618 by Raja Bir Singh Bundela with a cost of 33 lakh rupees. In 1670, we have the Farman of Aurangzeb for demolition of a Hindu temple at Mathura and in compliance and of, of, of uh, yes and Kashi and uh, in compliance of his Farman, the temple was demolished. Then the next important date is 1770, when Battle of Govardhan happened. The Marathas, Marathas won this entire area and took them within their control. In 1815, an auction happened by British government and Raja Patnimal of uh, Banaras purchased this entire land in auction purchase from the British government. Then Raja Patnimal's successor gave this entire land to Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi in 1944, who was the greatest leader to build a Bhavya temple there in 1944. When in 1944 this land was given to Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, a trust was formulated and the name of the trust was Shri Krishna Janbhumi Trust and, and got a very, very important thing. In 1950 document of Shri Krishna Janbhumi Trust, there is no mention of any mosque. Yes. That time the Hindus were getting united to collect money from all the individuals and make a Bhavya temple there. Like in had been done in Somnath already. So, yes. So I want to, and I want our viewers to know facts. You know, when people say Places of Worship Act is being violated, one, as advocate Vishnu Shankar Jain very, very rightly pointed out that Places of Worship Act will actually work in favor of Hindus here. Bilal Khan, now that I have you back, I want you to weigh in. Sir, there are documents after documents after documents that clearly establish the ownership of that land was always, always with the Hindus except when Aurangzeb ordered the demolition of a temple and the construction of a mosque. Response, sir. Bilal Khan. Okay. Vishnu, those who say Places of Worship Act says nothing after 1947, and I'll just uh, reconnect with Subhrashtra in just a moment. Places of Worship Act 1947, after that, there, uh, 1991, after 1947, the nature of a place should not change. How does the Places of Worship Act actually work in favor of the Hindus in this place? When was the mosque actually constructed in this location? See, our categorical case is that mosque in this place has been constructed after the illegal compromise on 12th October 1968. There was no mosque before 12th October 1968, and that's why I highlighted the trust deed of 1950. Point number one. Point number two, which is very, very important, is in 1875, 10 rounds of litigation had happened between uh, the uh, encroachers as well as the uh, Mandir committee without any mosque. They wanted to observe the land, so there was litigation. They wanted to observe the land, there was litigation. 10 rounds of litigation in 1875, the Hindus won. In 1920, there was litigation between Hindus. That also the Hindus won. In 1935, there was litigation between Hindus and the, the local Muslims there. That also Hindus won. The title document, the transfer of title in 1944 was also challenged by Muslims. That also the Hindus won. And when everything was won by us, 
a fake compromise was entered on 12th October 1968, and they said that now we will construct a mosque over this particular land. Let, let me tell you, Gaurav, Places of Worship Act is attracted in our favor in this case because after 12th, after 15th August 1947, the character stick has been changed. This entire 13.37 acres of land. Is having characteristics of a Hindu temple. This entire 13.37 acres of land is very, very pious to us. It yes. finds mentioned in Gar Sahita. It finds mentioned in various Purans. And let me tell you, with lot of sense of authority, I want to tell on your channel. Let let there be a GPR survey. You will find the Karagar of Kans there itself. We that's will... the original Bhumi. Shubhrastra and Vishnu. That's the original place. That's a very important point that's being made. But before, I want both of you to respond to what AIMIM member of parliament and a very well-respected barrister, um, Asaduddin Uwaisi, what's he saying? He's actually criticized the Allahabad High Court order to allow the survey of the Shahi Eidgah complex in Mathura. He spoke exclusively to India Today's Milan Sharma. Listen in. Today, the biggest issue is the survey of Mathura जिसकी परमिशन अब मिल चुकी है कोर्ट से आपने इस पर ट्वीट करके कहा है कि इतनी जल्दी क्या थी 9 जनवरी को हियरिंग भी थी किस तरीके से देखते हैं आप देखिए अफसोस इस बात का है कि जब पार्लियामेंट में प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप एक्ट बनाया गया था उसमें बाबरी मस्जिद को उससे एक्सक्लूड किया गया था जो मैं समझता हूं बहुत बड़ी गलती थी खैर वो गलती हो गई उसमें जित कहा गया कि 15 अगस्त 1947 को जितने प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप होंगे उनका नेचर उनका कोई तब्दीली नहीं होगी अब हम बाबरी मस्जिद के जजमेंट के बाद से मैं ये कह रहा हूं क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का फैसला था और फैसला आस्था की बुनियाद पर दिया गया था जिसे अप्रिहेंशन का मैंने इजहार किया था कि अब हर मसले खुल जाएंगे आस्था के मामले के ऊपर वो सही साबित हो रहा है आप देख लीजिए कि ज्ञानवापी मस्जिद का मसला खुल गया और वहां पर एएसआई को जिम्मेदारी दी गई जाकर चेक करने के लिए मथुरा की जो मस्जिद का मामला है ये तो मामला था ही नहीं ये तो दोनों पार्टीज ने जिसमें शाही ईदगाह ट्रस्ट ने यूपी वक्फ बोर्ड से परमिशन लेकर और श्री कृष्ण जन्मस्थानम सेवा संघ ने बैठकर एग्रीमेंट कर लिया एक डिस्प्यूट को उन्होंने सेटल कर लिया अब सेटल डिस्प्यूट को आप एक इशू बना रहे हैं अभी बट इज दिस इशू बीइंग मेड ओनली नाउ और आर सम बीइंग इकोनॉमिकल विद द ट्रूथ बिकॉज इन कोर्ट ऑल फैक्ट्स विल इमर्ज एंड शुभराष्ट्र व्हेन असदुद्दीन ओवैसी सेज व्हेन द श्री राम जन्मभूमि वर्डिक्ट केम देयर वाज एन अप्रिहेंशन दैट दिस विल ओपन अ पंडोराज बॉक्स और एटलीस्ट फॉर टू अदर साइट्स मथुरा एंड काशी He says my apprehensions are being proven right. So why is Asaduddin Owaisi so perturbed by the uh, 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 by his uh, quote unquote uh, premonition? He should know that these three places, Kashi, Mathura, and Ayodhya, have a special uh, place in every Hindu's heart. Like, and I don't want to make a parallel. Like there are places of uh, worship for Muslims, then they're they're very emotional about it. it has been a long standing demand of the hindus that let's have these three places of worship free from all kinds of uh, you know constructions that have happened in the recent past and when i mention recent past i mention in terms of historical time frame why is asaduddin owaisi so uh, perturbed by this it's only uh, i mean he is a barrister i'm sure he has also studied history he knows this land more than all of, uh, as much as all of us do if not more So I don't understand where is this perturbation coming from. So let me Now, take that to question... Bilal Khan. I think we have that link again with okay. him. Bilal Khan, Shubhrasha raises a very valid point or an important point. She says it's Ayodhya, Mathura, and Kashi, sacred to Hindus. Sri Ram, Sri Krishna, and Bhagwan Shiv, not significant for Muslims. Why not amicably settle this? It's जितना emotions इनके लिए हैं वो हमारे लिए भी हैं. सेम टू सेम क्वेश्चन ये है विष्णु जैन साहब से मेरा क्वेश्चन डायरेक्टली ये है जब ये एग्रीमेंट ऑलरेडी हो चुका है डिसाइडेड था उसको आप लोग बार बार जाके फिर उसमें सर्वे का जैसे ज्ञान वापी को आप लोग अगेंस्ट वही सब सर्वे एसआई सर्वे एंड अगेन इसमें ये सब तो हमें तो मालूम है आपकी राजनीति हम इस पर नहीं जाएंगे हमें तो कोर्ट का जो नजरिया है कोर्ट से जो भी आएगा उसको माना है कि जब हमने ज्ञान वापी पे भी माना जब राम मंदिर और जब बाबरी मस्जिद का मामला था उसमें 
डायरेक्टली कहा गया था इसके बाद प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप एक्ट जहां जहां नेचर कैरेक्टर होगा वहां कोई चेंजेस होंगे लेकिन अब फिर दोबारा से मथुरा को लेकर आगे काशी मथुरा तो ये सब कब तक चलता रहेगा मेरा सिंपल क्वेश्चन है इनसे तो हिंदुओं की आस्था के साथ खिलवाड़ होता रहे इस देश में ये आपको मंजूर है चाहे किसी और की आस्था उसमें हो ना हो आपका ये प्रश्न है ना कि समझौता हो गया था विष्णु जैन आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू दैट पॉइंट दैट वॉज रेज बोथ बाई बिलाल खान एंड बाय असदुद्दीन ओवैसी समझौता हो गया था देर वॉज एन अग्रीमेंट वाई आर यू रेजिंग दिस इन कोर्ट नाउ एक्सप्लेन दैट अग्रीमेंट एंड वाई यू आर चैलेंजिंग दैट सर See, uh, the most important thing, Gaurav, is that they, if you will ask them what proof you have that this is a mosque, a valid mosque, whether this has been dedicated by Waf, by Aurangzeb, or by any ruler, they will have no answer. If you will ask that what yeah. title yeah. document you have to say that so it's me, a mosque, so they have written a statement. They have filed in the court, Gaurav. The written statement on affidavit filed by them is that this mosque is outside 13. Okay. They are having a defensive approach. No document. Who is saying that I am offering namaz here from past so many years, from past 50 years? They have no other claim. Now, now coming to the compromise, just a minute. As I explain you, I am again. Sir, I am asking your question. Can you answer my question? And then, make a temple. यही एजेंडा नैरेटिव चलाते रहोगे देश के अंदर एजेंडा और नैरेटिव की बात कब तक आप कहेंगे कि हिंदुओं को भगवान श्री कृष्ण की जन्मभूमि न मिले? क्या वो ईदगाह क्या वो ईदगाह कहीं और शिफ्ट हो सकती है या नहीं क्या ये प्यार से बातचीत के जरिए सुलझ सकता है मसला या नहीं और वो जो अग्रीमेंट हुआ था क्या वो मालिकाना हक जिसके पास था उससे अग्रीमेंट हुआ था या फिर कुछ और लोगों के साथ अग्रीमेंट हुआ था दीज आर ऑल क्वेश्चन दैट विल बी डिसाइडेड इन अ कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ आई रन आउट ऑफ टाइम ऑन दिस पार्ट द शो but advocate vishnu shankar jain shubhrash and bilal khan for joining me here on this india today special many thanks we'll be tracking this story very very closely